What's up guys, this is Demkeys and this is going to be part 4 of the Unity tile map series. In this video, we are going to create a really simple playable level using Unity's tile map features. So let's begin. We're going to start by creating a new scene, then head over to the sprites folder. Now real quick, we need to change the pixels per unit value of some of the sprite sheets and then we can continue. Select other sprite sheet and set its pixels per unit to 250. Hit apply, then select platform sprite sheet and set its pixels per unit to 98 and hit apply. Alright, next we need to create tiles out of these cloud sprites. First of all, we need to split the sprite sheet into multiple sprites. So set the sprite mode to multiple, hit apply, then in the sprite editor, do an automatic slice, again hit apply, and now we have two separate cloud sprites. Control select both these sprites and drag and drop them into our palette. Select the tiles folder to save the tiles into, and as you can see, we now have both our cloud tiles. They're overlapping each other, so real quick let's edit this palette, and then select one of the tiles and move it so it's not overlapping the other. Other. Real quick, let's save the scene so the palette gets saved. Alright, next we need to create a new palette for the platform tiles. So click this drop down, click create new palette, name the new palette platform palette, and make sure its cell size is set to automatic. Hit create, then navigate to the palettes folder so that the palette will be saved in that folder and click select folder. Okay, so our palette has been created. Now, just as we did with the cloud sprites, we need to split these sprites up as well. So set the sprite mode to multiple, hit apply, open up the sprite editor, do an automatic slice, again hit apply and we now have two different sprites. Just control click both of them and drag and drop them into the platform palette. Again we need to select the tiles folder to save the tiles into and we now have two tiles over here. Now real quick I want to point something out. Notice how the grid here looks different than the grid of for example my palette 01. This is because we set the cell size to automatic. So the cell size is being decided based on the tiles that are put into the palette. Alright next we need to create our tile maps. So right click in the hierarchy, click 2D object tile map, rename this tile map to sky tile map and from my palette 01 select the cyan tile then enable the box fill tool and draw a big box of cyan tiles so this is our sky and then using control click paint these clouds onto the tile map don't forget you can also rotate the tiles i'm going to speed up this footage just to save time Alright, so I think I overdid the clouds a little bit, but it really doesn't matter. It's just for the sake of the tutorial. Now that we are done with this tile map, make sure its order in layer is zero and then create a new tile map. Right click on the grid game object, click 2D object, tile map. Rename this tile map to wall style map. Then make sure wall style map is the active tile map in the tile palette window and using the box fill tool, draw the ground walls and roof. Then select this tile right here and using the box fill tool, add this sort of platform. All right, so we are done with this tile map. Make sure this tile map's order and layer is set to one because we want it to always be rendered in front of the sky tile map. Next, we need to create a tile map for the spikes. Right click on the grid game object, click 2D object, tile map, rename this to spike tile map. Then make sure active tile map is set to spike tile map. Then control select the spike tile and using the box fill tool, draw spikes. Alright, so the spikes are really small. You can't see them, but they are all around the edges. Make sure the spike tile maps order and layer is set to 2. We can even set it to 1 because it's not really overlapping the wall style map, but just set it to 2. It's not really a problem. Next, we need to paint the platform tile map. But this tile map is going to be on a new grid. So right click in the hierarchy, click 2D object, tile map. This is going to create a new grid game object and a tile map game object within that grid game object. Rename the tile map game object to platform tile map. And now we need to set the cell size of this grid to match the cell size of the grid of the platform palette. Now you should see this cell size on the platform palette prefabs grid. However, if you don't, just edit the platform palette and real quick just paint a couple of more cells with one of these tiles. Once you do that, hit save, exit edit mode and at that point you should see the cell size change. Now you can see this number seems to be a little too precise. We don't need the number to be so precise, so we're just going to round it off. Set the cell size to 3 on X and 1.5 on Y. All right. Now, right click on the grid component and click copy component. Then select this grid game object in the scene and right click on its grid component and click paste component values. All right, now we can't see the change over here. That's because the active tile map is not set to platform tile map. Set it to platform tile map and then change focus on to tile map. And now you should be able to see the grid's cell size. So now we need to paint our tiles. Ignore these other tiles that we added over here. We are just gonna use these two tiles. Now again, even with this, I'm gonna speed up 
the process. Basically, all I'm going to do is paint this tile or this tile. This tile right here can be used for both the sides just by rotating the tile. So this is the middle piece. I can paint two of these and then I'm going to paint this on one side and then rotate it and paint it on the other side. All right, so now I'm going to draw the rest of the platforms, but I'm going to speed up the footage to save time. All right, so I've painted all the platforms. Now you can change focus on to none. All right, next we need to assign colliders to all of these tile maps. Now I've already mentioned in the previous video that you can use other 2D colliders as well, but the way that we have set up this level, using tile map collider 2D should be more than enough. So select all of the tile maps except for the sky tile map and add a tile map collider 2D component to them. And as you can see, a tile map collider 2D has been added to all of the tiles. However, there seems to be a problem here. Spike tile map styles don't have any colliders attached to them. Real quick, let's fix this problem. Go into the tiles folder and select the spike tile. And as you can see, collider type is set to none. Change that to sprite. And now when you select the spike tile map, you can see the spike tiles have colliders on them. Okay, next we need to create a finish point for the level. So right click in the hierarchy, click create empty, rename this game object to finish and add a box collider 2D to it. Bring the game object here so that we can see it. Scale the game object so that the collider scales as well. And then once it's big enough, move the game object here. Make sure to check is trigger because we're going to use this as a trigger not as a collider then assign the finish tag to this finished game object also select the spike tile map and we need to assign the spike tag to this game object but we don't have a spike tag so click add tag and add a new tag called spike then select the spike tile map and assign it the spike tag also make sure the spike tile map style map collider 2d is a trigger not a collider finally we just need to add our player game object head over to the sprites folder and drag and drop the circle sprite into the hierarchy. Make sure the circle sprites order and layer is set to 10 so it's rendered above everything else. Rename the game object to player, add a rigid body 2D component to it along with the circle collider 2D component. Bring the game object over here. Also change the color of the sprite to red so it's more visible and increase the size of the game object. Next add a script to the player game object. Call it player move script 01. Open this up in mono develop. All right this is going to be a really simple script. Type rigid body 2D R body 2D. This is going to be a reference to the rigid body 2D component then type public float move force then type public float jump force in the start method type our body 2d equals get component rigid body 2d basically we're adding a reference to the rigid body 2d component then create a fixed update function and within the fixed update function type float h equals input dot get axis raw horizontal multiplied by move force and then our body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot write multiplied by h so this code is for the movement. Then in the update method, type if input dot get key down key code dot space. Then our body 2D dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force. Finally, void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D call. Within this method, type if call dot game object dot tag is equal to spike or call dot game object dot tag is equal to finish, then destroy game object. So basically, if the player enters a trigger that has the tag spike or the tag finish, the game object will be destroyed. All right, so I made a mistake in the script. Move the bracket from here to here. That's it. Hit save, go back to Unity. Now we need to set the variable values move force should be 50 jump force should be 1200 and also the rigid body 2d's gravity scale should be 5 not 1 and just for the heck of it select the main camera and increase the size so the camera is looking at more of the level all right before you hit play i forgot to do this earlier make sure you set platform tile maps order in layer to 3 now hit play and as you can see if i run into one of the spikes the game object gets destroyed hit play again and let's try finishing the level so the finish trigger is here. As you can see, it works. So yeah, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to check out other videos, head over to my channel and there should be one video up on the screen right now as well. If you want to check out Glowing Dude's tutorial where he shows how he made these art assets, the link to his series will be up on the screen right now as well. If you want to help me out with the donation, my PayPal email address is up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.